Hello, everyone um, out there on Facebook. I hope you're having a great lunchtime if you're on the East Coast and if you're in other parts of the country, I hope you're having, or internationally, I hope you're having a great day. Um, my name is Dr. Rasan Harris. I am the CEO of Citizens Committee for New York City. We're an organization that was founded to bring New Yorkers together to improve neighborhoods. Um, and we were founded in the 1970s at a time of crisis. And interestingly, we're at another time of crisis because of the COVID pandemic. And we wanted to share a little bit about our work with you. Um, we have really amazing partners that are in neighborhoods that are leading the response of what New Yorkers are doing to make sure that we're surviving COVID, that we're making sure we're checking on each other and making sure that we're a part of a recovery that makes a New York City that's even better than it was for the pandemic. So we have a really great presentation that we're gonna share some information. And you're gonna hear from a person who is a, a grantee partner of ours, who's a great community leader. And, and hopefully um, you'll be able to check in with us and join us as we try to spread the word of the positive things that people are doing to make sure that New York City is as strong as it can be, to make sure that no neighborhood is left behind. And so I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Erica and Katie, and just want to thank you again for joining us. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Erica. Uh, I am a staff at Citizens Committee, and this is my colleague Katie here. Um, and uh, we heard a little bit from Rasan, our CEO. Thank you for that introduction, Rasan. Um, and we're going to be hearing a little bit also from Karen, uh, who's representing Gardens of Happiness in a little bit as well. Um, and before we get started, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about who Citizens Committee is for those that are just joining us or maybe have, haven't heard of us before or are new to us. Um, we are a nonprofit that started during the fiscal crisis of the 70s um, when the city couldn't support basic needs. Um, and during this time, Citizens Committee supported New Yorkers who volunteered to roll up their sleeves and improve the quality of life in their neighborhood, kind of exactly what is happening right now. Um, and by support, we mean through free workshops, through grants, through community leader capacity, um, through project planning assistance, and through sharing stories of the work that of the work groups are doing throughout the city. Um, and just a little bit about myself, I'm typically the development and volunteer manager. So uh, on a nice non-pandemic day, I would be out in the community um, and you might see us with our yellow or blue t-shirts working in the garden, working at a public school, revitalizing spaces with corporate volunteers. Um, and if you have worked with us before, um, we that's probably one of the best things about my job, being, out, being able to go out in the community and seeing the work that our grantees are doing out in the open. Um, and now I'm gonna let my colleague Katie introduce um, herself and about what she does. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I'm Katie again. I'm a programs grants manager at Citizens Committee for New York City. And typically I coordinate our grant programs and support our grassroots community groups and community leaders through project planning assistance and leadership and grant writing workshops. So I get to work with some amazing people just like Karen who's joining us today. Um, and also part of my role um, is to communicate some of the data that we've collected through our survey that Rasan mentioned earlier. So um, really for Citizens Committee, we're in the spirit of transparency and community collaboration. Um, so what we'll be doing is hosting 15 minute sessions um, and sharing what our organization is doing right now to support New York City communities during this time. Um, so we're also inviting community leaders to share the work that they're doing and what um, in order to support their neighborhood. And before we pass the mic to Karen to talk, um, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about what Citizens Committee has been doing these past few months um, so that you have a better idea of how it led to our response right now. Um, and I'm going to let Katie jump into a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. In terms of our timeline, um, pretty much right after March 16th, when the city um, kind of went on into our New York pause. Um, near the end of March, uh, our organization created a survey um, really to assess the needs of our grantees and community leaders throughout New York City and other New Yorkers. Um, so in just a few days, we had staff. We also had some amazing volunteers and board members call, email, and text our grantees just to check in, to talk um, and hear what they're going through, as well as making sure their vo voices could be heard um, across the city. So if you're joining us today, we definitely wanna to hear from you. Kind of tell us how you know us um, through a poll that we'll link. 
um, just so we get a little bit of a feel of who's joining us today. Um, but with the survey right now, we're almost at a thousand responses. So what we've done is we've worked with a team of volunteer data scientists to analyze this data. Um, and some of this data has already been shared with elected officials across the city so they can figure out how to best support their districts. Um, and today we'll be sharing citywide data results. Really what we wanna do is we wanna make sure the information that people have shared with us, we're not just holding on to. We wanna make sure that we're able to amplify that and share that so others can use it um, to really address needs in their communities as well. And just to get us started, um, if you guys will direct your attention to the presentation, um, this is kind of diving right into the data. So as you can see, um, this is actually a map, a custom made map of um, not only where our communities are hardest hit by COVID and affected by COVID, um, but how um, this is affecting our grantee respondents directly. So the orange dots are where our um, the communities hardest hit are and the black dots represent where our survey respondents come from. So as you can see, basically every community, almost every community that was affected by COVID had a survey respondent um, reflecting that. So that kind of shows where our data is going in at this point. So although all of New York City has been hit hard by the virus, Queens and the Bronx have been the hardest hit boroughs and Queens has the highest rate of cases of COVID-19, while the Bronx has the highest number of death rates due to COVID-19. These high death rates are mostly due to the higher prevalence of things like diabetes and asthma in the borough, which are two of the main underlying conditions that cause more severe cases of the virus. And in addition to um, areas that are hardest hit, there are also certain populations um, that have higher mortality rates in the city. Um, so mortality rates are higher among New York City's Hispanic and Black populations compared to other racial and ethnic groups. And so it really shows that the impacts of the virus right now really highlights the structural inequalities that already exist in New York City. And this gets into our demographics of um, people that reflect um, our survey respondents. So our majority of respondents were identified as Black, 38% of them. Um, and what wasn't identified in this graph, but is in our data, is that 23% of them were uh, responded as Latinx. Um, and as Kitty mentioned, um, Black residents and Hispanic residents are being affected the most by coronavirus in terms of death. And actually, to give a little context, Latinos represent 29% um, of the city's population, but 34% of those that have died from coronavirus, um, while Black people represent 22% of the population and represent 28% of the death. So on our survey, we asked respondents to identify the top needs in their communities in the next few weeks and the few months, really trying to understand um, what are the needs in the city. So you can see in this bar graph that um, financial resources are clearly the highest needs across the city, which is not surprising. And this was followed by access to food ac and access to healthcare. Access to services for elders were a close third. And specifically, we decided to look in depth into Black and Latinx communities um, and what their top priorities are, especially with what is happening in the city. And so um, Black and Latinx, X respondents both identified access to financial resources and food as their top two priorities, while Black communities identified access to computers as their third priority, and Latinx identified their third priority as access to healthcare. So something we also did is we reached out to our community leaders and community partners. Um, we also collected um, stories and wanted to hear how our community leaders are doing during this pandemic. So a group we wanted to highlight is LOL, um, that is in Nor Norwood in the Bronx. Um, previously, this group was creating safe spaces for Bangladeshi women to congregate and come together to discuss mental health and gain access to resources. Um, so they were a former grantee um, and also an all-in neighborhood grant winner for this year. Um, so they're pivoting, uh, and with their all-in grant, they're pivoting to focus on COVID-19. So they're delivering food, they're providing resources to elderly communities, they're raising funds for the community, and they're also conducting the census, which is very important right now, and a small plug for anyone uh, to make sure they fill out the census. 
Um, another amazing grantee a partner that's doing great work citywide and in the Bronx is Karen Washington from the Garden of Happiness. And she has joined us today. Um, so Karen, um, we would love to hear from you um, about the work that you are doing and also see a little bit of where you're at right now. Thank you so much. Big up to uh, Dr. Harris and his staff. Um, Citizens has always been at the forefront of helping uh, neighborhood residents achieve their goals. So yeah, um, I'm an urban farmer. So I farm in the Bronx. My community garden is Garden of Happiness, but I'm also a rural farmer upstate on my farm, Rising Root, which is a three acre farm. We're here now um, planting transplants that will go back into the city, especially uh, areas in the, in the Bronx. But I like to talk about exactly what we're doing um, during this crisis because we're not being idle. Many of us know the facts about what is happening when it comes to food access to low-income neighborhoods, neighborhood colors, people who are immigrants. And so what we're doing in our community gardens is that we're starting to grow food. We're starting to grow food that's culturally appropriate. We're starting to grow food and we're making connections with other community gardens in the Bronx because we see ourselves as food hubs. We want to make sure that our people are being fed, but they're being fed with nutritious produce. This is what we are doing. Uh, even though at this point in time, the community gardens are limited only to gardeners, we are practicing COVID-19 precautions. We're wearing, we're wearing masks. We have six uh, feet distancing. We are washing our hands. So we are really adhering to the protocol. But folks, we want to let you all know that we're out there. We are champions out there making sure that by the end of the day, our communities are going to be fed. We are also partnering with local community organizations in my area, the Mary Mitchell Center, where we do at least four to 600 meals a day. We drop them off. People drop off our, our bags in our community. I walk up and down the street to make sure that our seniors are being fed. And I'm challenging you all too, to make sure that your seniors are, 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 are being fed, that they, they have access to food, and many times this is something that our youth can do if they're able to go to the store, check on our elders to make sure that they have uh, food uh, to eat. And so this, this pandemic has really brought so many of us together. I think so many of us at times have been in isolation, but what we're doing now folks is that we're coming together as New Yorkers, we're coming together as communities to make sure post COVID, that we continue to work together, that we continue to make sure our communities are fed, that we continue to make sure that we have the resources, the resources to maintain the health and well being of our community. One other thing I want to talk about too is to make sure that we talk about mental health, mental health, because this has been this has taken a toll on our psyche, on our mental health. We've been cooped up. Um, and so we have to really think about dealing with mental health. We have to think about our, our youth because. You know, our youth has really been challenging. A lot of them have lost um, their, their high school graduations. A lot of them have lost the ability, you know, to go and play. And so youth, we're gonna be there for you because we know these are trying times. And so we must be patient with our youth. We must find ways that they can get outdoors safely. And those, those are the things that we're gonna do in our community garden and our community at large. Thank you, Karen, so much for sharing all of that. And something I wanted to highlight is kind of the partnerships that you're building. And you mentioned this network of gardens that you're really trying to build. Um, how many community gardens are you working with right now and in what neighborhoods? So, so far we got, um, we got eight community gardens. So anywhere from the Northwest Bronx to the South Bronx, I'll name some of the gardens. So we have Padre Plaza, we have La Finca del Sol, which is like in the lower Bronx, uh, Friendsville Brook Park, um, we have so many, the Garden of Happiness, Garden of Youth, uh, Clinton Avenue Garden, uh, Tremont Avenue Garden, Abyssal, which is up in the north part of the Bronx. Um, so we've come together as a group, uh, even um, the garden on, um, gosh, it's on the Grand Concourse next to, I guess, New Roots. That's right, New Roots. New yeah. Roots. And so we're partnering with, uh, with uh, the Bronx Greenup has really been instrumental and making sure that you know we put a survey to find out exactly what are things that we can grow together, what are things that people need that are culturally appropriate, and so we are we meet every week to talk about 
our strategy, talking about distribution, how are we gonna distribute the food safely within our gardens and within our community? And so we're not sitting on our laurels, folks. We're coming together. And not only that, we've also been working with people in other boroughs, like in, in Brooklyn and Queens, who wanna do the same thing. So this is not just a Bronx project, but I'm pretty sure many community gardens are coming together to do the same thing because at the end of the day, we have to make sure that our communities are fed. And Karen, um, if I'm a viewer and I'm just a regular person who's in the community and I want to support and volunteer or do something to help during this time, um, is there anything specific that they could do to help you? Or if you have any advice for people that just want to get involved at this time? Yeah, so it's really, really critical. First of all, first, I just love the support that so many people want to give us. Right now in New York City, the community gardens are closed to the public. And that's for safety reason. Hopefully by June or July, uh, the restrictions will lessen so that um, people could come into our gardens. But in the meantime, what people can do, if you have a front yard, if you have a backyard, if you have a windowsill, if you have a terrace, this is the time for you to start thinking about growing food. And let me tell you, the seed companies are off the chart because so many people want to now get involved in growing food. And so you can do this. At this point in time, you can do this. Uh, get involved in growing something in your backyard, in your front yard, on your terrace, on your windowsill, because this is the time for us to really understand the importance of growing food, the importance of eating healthy. Karen, um, Hassan here again. Can you talk about access to food and food insecurity in this moment of COVID? Yes, I think, thank you so much, Dr. Hassel, for bringing that up, because all of us in the hood, be it Harlem, be it the Bronx, be it in Brooklyn, be it in Queens. We knew before COVID, who were the people who were suffering from food insecurity and limited access, mostly low-income neighborhoods, mostly people of color, and mostly people with predisposing pre diseases such as type two diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. We knew this from the very beginning. And so what this pandemic has shown, it has just are brought to the forefront the inequalities that we see along food access. And so many of us, even before this pandemic, have been working on the front lines, growing food, making sure our communities have access to food. In particular, um, my organization, La Familia Verde Community Garden Coalition, we started a farmer's market 18 years ago when it was unheard of, when people thought that having a, having a farmer's market in a low income neighborhood would not be successful. And it is, and so we have 20 community-based farmers markets throughout New York City that are doing the same thing. And so we cannot forget, post-COVID, we cannot forget, it's a new era, we're not gonna go back to the way things are. What we must champion, folks, is that food is a human right for all. And so now we understand the importance of growing food. We now understand some of the essential workers who are community gardens, who are farmers, who are farm workers, who have for so long been out in the trenches, undercover, but now we're coming to the forefront. And so we have to make sure as we go forward, folks, again, food is a human right food that is fresh, food that is local, food that is nutritious is a human right. And as we go forward, we must make sure that everyone has access to food. Everyone has access to, to water. Everyone has access to, to, to live a healthy life. I think those are really powerful words. And um, I think this is a great place for us to at least pause this conversation, but um, make sure that those words ring out to folks who are watching this um, right now, that we're in a moment of crisis. And when you're in crisis, you hunker down and try to take care of your basic needs. And it's important to recognize that some people were struggling to take care of basic needs even before the pandemic hit. So the question becomes like, what type of new future can we create together as we, work through this pandemic and what kind of new New York are we going to be a part of and what's our role in creating that new New York as we step up to get through COVID and we're here to support one another to try to create a just um, fair and hopefully sustainable type of society that we all want to live in while we want to be a part of. So Karen, thank you for all that you're doing. We hope that everyone who is watching 
um, checks out your organization. We're, it's an honor to be able to give you a grant. When we last spoke, we heard you talking about making sure that water is delivered to community guards and figuring out a way that we can do that. So folks advocating and asking questions about how that can happen. People asking about, you know, what are ways to appropriately social distance in a community garden so that we can, yes, keep people healthy, but also, yes, make sure that we're getting food delivered and making sure that we're taking people's mental health into consideration so that we can do what we can um, to, to help people get through. I think they're all great questions and conversations that need to continue long after we're off of this Facebook Live, but we hope that people carry it forward. And um, just thank you for all that you're doing. Um, and thank you for allowing Citizens Committee to be a part of your network and what you feel is important to make the work go. Can I just say one thing? Because I just want to just praise Citizens Committee because when no one could write a grant or no one could do a 15 page document or no one who, who, who were out there in the trenches was recognized, Citizens Committee stepped up to the front. They have been, I, 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 I'm lost for words because they have been so supportive of so many of grassroots organizations. So I'm, I, along with so many people, Dr. Harris, really want to thank you mm -hmm for recognizing the potential of grassroots organizations and recognizing the work that we have done year after year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know that thank you resonates throughout so many organizations that are out there that are doing the work. So thank you citizens, don't forget us, continue to work with us, be by our side to support us and uplift us and thank you, thank you so much. Wow, and actually I wanna close on that. Um, we won't exist if it weren't for the great leaders that are in neighborhoods that are doing the work. And we want to be a platform that allows your voice to be heard and amplified throughout New York City. We wanna make sure that no community is left behind and that the leaders that are identifying need have someone to, to give their concerns to. And so thank you for having the courage to step up and being with us on our first Facebook Live. We hope other grantee partners of ours um, write to us and let us know what they're doing so that we can lift up their voice and what they're doing so that um, those again, who are caught in some of these divides uh, and some of these places that are forgotten are not forgotten and that we shine a light on the solutions and the resilience that our leaders have in these communities. And again, create a, a better future than what we had in the past. Um, you know, we're not trying to make things great again. What we're trying to do is to create the preferred future that we know can happen if everyone has a voice and everyone is working together. So thank you. We want to be hashtag at their service, at the service of all the folks that are doing great stuff for us. Um, and thank you for being um, all in for New York City. So with that, we're ending this Facebook Live. Please share this with other folks. Please let people know what we're doing. Because you know, we're at our best when people are trying to create a united, all in New York City. So thank you and look forward to soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.